It's good to be with you. It's Peter Barlow, here, cardiologist. Now, today we're focusing on a very important topic, particularly in the health and fitness industry, and that is on the use of performance-enhancing drugs, otherwise generally called steroids, and what impact they have on the heart. Now, there's no denying that we have tragically seen time and time again of people in the health and fitness industry succumbing to the effects of these drugs and steroids. In an aspiration to achieve a better physique, more muscle, less fat, in a very competitive environment, these agents, these drugs are used and we have to you know, accept that they are in use. And they do have a major burden on the body itself. Today we'll focus on what impact they have on the heart. Now when we look at what are some of these agents, and when you look at the World Anti-Doping Agency, they have classified many of these agents and looking at particularly anabolics and anabolic steroids. And these are ones that can increase the production of the body's own testosterone levels, but also provide supplemental anabolic effects of uh, androgens and testosterone to help build muscle and achieve that improved physique. There are many other peptides and looking at analogues of growth hormone or growth hormone itself, and there are particular insulin-like growth peptides that can promote the production of growth hormone and of course growth hormone itself is anabolic and can lead to increasing strength, muscle mass and also achieve fat loss. Other hormones and genes have also been used in this space and various compounds that can improve, for example, the amount of oxygen that is delivered into the bloodstream. So you might have heard one called EPO, erythropoietin. But there are stimulants, there are narcotics, there are also cannabinoids and cannabis and other agents like this that have been deemed to be illegal in sports and athletics. But there is no denying that these drugs are in use. And uh, I think we have to move on from the thought that these are just purely used uh, in backyard, uh, in backyards, and you know, local gyms. They are actually widespread in their use, and I think it is important that we have some appreciation of what impact they do have on the body, and in particular the heart, given that it's often the heart that leads to the complications that we see, heart attacks. And, and more worryingly, of course, you know, death. So anabolics and these anabolic drugs and anabolic steroids were originally developed back in the 1930s. And that was to treat a condition called hypogonadism, whereby the testes in males was not producing enough of its own natural hormone, testosterone. And these drugs were used to improve these conditions, whereby there was a deficiency it was also and has been used and is still used in conditions of delayed puberty and some form of uh, impotence that uh, is as a result of low testosterone or low androgen levels. They can also be used and, and are prescribed for people who have wasting disorders whereby the muscles due to various diseases and myopathies or muscle conditions and things like HIV infection can have muscle wasting and weakness, well, the steroids are prescribed to help improve that. However, in the real world setting, they are used both in professional and amateur leagues, and they are in broad use by non-professionals. And again, there is this attempt to seek a better physique, to have weight loss, to improve self-confidence, enhance social media presence, and many, many reasons as to why they are used. And they are often done without careful surveillance by a qualified health practitioner. 
So it might be advice that is obtained by a friend in the gym who says, look, yeah, use a bit of this, use a bit of that, and you'll be right. And the notion is that when you are on these, it's often the healthy, the well people that are taking them who feel rather strong and invincible. And now this won't have an impact on me. Why would I want to see a doctor? When we look at the impact, and these are often injected, but can be taken by mouth, but they're usually injected compounds, they have an impact all over the body. So we do see the positive benefits where we see the muscle growth and the fat loss and the increasing body mass and weight. But again, they are having an impact in other organs apart from muscle tissue, and in particular, you know, skeletal muscle. And these effects are significant. They are having an impact on all body systems, looking at the liver, the kidneys, the heart, the endocrine or hormone system. And these effects and the impact often are not recognized. And they go unrecognized for some time before they manifest with clinical symptoms and signs. And damage can be long-lasting and permanent. So it's important to know what these drugs can do and what to look out for. And any contemplation of using these compounds and drugs must be and should be done under the careful surveillance of a healthcare professional who can monitor things closely in terms of the body, the examination, things like blood pressure, but also the blood parameters. Now again, we're not advocating for using these compounds, but we have to be realistic that they are being used. So knowing a bit about what they do is important. Now, the notion that taking some form of tonic or some natural supplement to counter the effect of these drugs, I am not a believer of. And you will see many people on social media, you know, bodybuilders who you know, do not come out and obviously state that they are using these agents, but may say that they are taking many supplements and they'll go through their their stacks of what they are on, including, you know, their their pre-workouts and their creatine and their, you know, whey protein isolates. And they'll also say that they take a supplement for the liver, a supplement for the kidney, a supplement for the heart and heart health. But again, these supplements are often inadequate to counter the effect of performance enhancing drugs. So again, what most people see on social media is certainly an amazing physique that appears to be the result of these very you know, natural compounds and natural products. As I said, BCAAs, the creatine, the protein, the pre-workout. But we have to be sensible and acknowledge that these drugs are commonly used and often not commonly mentioned or talked about. Now, in part two, we're going to look at what impact these performance-enhancing drugs have on the body and in particular, on the heart.